All right, let's talk about iSCSI because this one is kind of a complex subject. It's something that a lot of people misunderstand. And what iSCSI is, is a directly attached storage through a network connection. And a lot of people are like, well, that's kind of like a file share. I'm like, no, not really, because what iSCSI is meant is a direct connection, meaning only really one person. So you have what's called an iSCSI target, and inside that target's an actual storage LUN. And that storage LUN stores all the data. So both of these, think of it as almost like an external device or external drive, but instead of USB, you're using a network connection. Now you can directly attach this to your actual computer doing uh, just an iSCSI connection. A lot of times you do this on like Windows servers and things like that if you need. However, the main purpose of iSCSI in today's world is really to connect hypervisors. Now, <clears throat> I'm not going to go too much in the weeds on this. I just kind of want to break down just an overview. The iSCSI itself, I'm going to show you how to create the target and the LUN. And then we're going to go ahead and enable a couple things so our hypervisor hosts can all connect to the single iSCSI target. Now, by default, when you create an iSCSI target, it will only connect to one device, but when you do a big hypervisor environment, you need multiple computers connecting to the same one, and that's okay. Now, if you're doing this in a residential environment, you should probably just use a file share, not iSCSI. I just wanna stipulate that right out of the gate because uh, to do multiple hosts to connect to one iSCSI target, requires um, some advanced configuration or at least the capabilities of it. So with this, we'll go ahead and jump over and, and do that portion of it and then go over to the hypervisor. The hypervisor today is gonna be XCPNG. It's a Zen server uh, fork. So if you're familiar with Citrix Zen server, it's like VMware or Hyper-V from Microsoft. So that's kind of what it is, but the XCPNG is completely open source all of it's right there on the web. We can use all the advanced features without anything locked behind a paywall. That's why I choose it. Now you could also use like Proxmox and some other ones out there that are also very good. But for today's video, I'm gonna show that. Now on this product, I will be using Zen Orchestra through the actual web to configure the actual uh, storage repository and connect directly to it, and then also launch the virtual machine. So. Uh, that's what we're going to do right now, so we'll jump over to the desktop and get into it. Let's see what we got here. We can go ahead and create this target, so we'll create a target, target one. You can enable authentication if you like, create a new iSCSI LUN, that's fine. Put it on our volume one capacity, uh, that's one gigabyte, that's a pretty small target. Let's do one terabyte. Now, when it comes to iSCSI and thin provisioning, typically this isn't recommended just because you can have some performance hits, especially when you start getting close to the max uh, capacity. So I like to do just establish a one terabyte LUN, which should be more than what I need, but let's say down the line I wanted to go ahead and add another one. I would just add another LUN and just say, hey, here it is on another one, because it's not gonna affect the virtual machines at all, and I can just add more targets. So with that, let's go ahead and hit next and apply. So this go, go, went ahead and created that one terabyte iSCSI. This target we could now probably hook up. We have our LUN available, and then we can probably do like snapshots and replication. Now there's one more thing I wanna add here before we continue on to the hypervisor to actually add this uh, target we just established. We'll go into our actual target and, and down here, you'll see where it says multiple sessions. After some testing, if you're having multiple hosts, meaning more than one computer is needing to connect to this iSCSI target, make sure you enable multiple sessions. It was a little bit of a trip up when I first enabled this and one thing you need to do. It's under actual advanced and it says allow multiple sessions. Now this is just so if uh, let's say a host goes down and I have high availability on and it's sharing that same iSCSI target, it'll be able to swap over to that other host. So this is one thing I kind of wanted to show. Uh, I know there's more of a big business type of setup, but even if uh, you're not, uh, definitely Look at this when connecting more than one PC to the same iSCSI target. Now, if you're just doing an extra hard drive or something like that to a workstation and you're using iSCSI, 
definitely do not use multiple sessions. Multiple sessions are only really meant for hypervisors that share the same storage target. But I wanted to bring this up just because this was a little bit of a trip up when I first installed this. So with that, go ahead and pull up my hypervisor, which I emulate a lot of virtual machines on, and we'll go ahead and migrate one of those virtual machines just to see how it does as far as performance goes on it. So let's go ahead, pull up that. Um, we're logged in here. I'll go close that out. This is a community edition of Zen Orchestra. And we're going to go ahead and create a new storage. So let's go ahead. If we come down to new, we can click storage. From the new dialog, we can select our host. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select the, the master host on this one. And then we'll name this one Synology. This is where all our virtual machines are going to be pushed to after we do some testing. It's going to be an iSCSI. Remember us creating that one terabyte iSCSI target? We didn't do any authentication. If this was a business environment, obviously, we would have done authentication. We're going to just see if it finds it without the port. And look at that. It already did. That's amazing. Then we just select our IQ in. So there's the LUN. This will take a little bit to populate, usually several seconds, and then it goes ahead. Look at that, pretty fast. And we'll go ahead and hit create. All right, we now have the iSCSI pool here ready to go. I think what we do here is first show a test of how long it takes to boot up. Let's go ahead and go into our, our VMs overview. Let's do our Plex server. This one sees decent amount of traffic. Uh, we'll go to the console, pull this up. Okay, so here is our Plex server. We've just logged in. We're going to go ahead and reboot, and I'm going to put a little timer on the screen here. All right, here we go. It's booting up finally. Took a long time to reboot there, about a minute and a half on my old FreeNAS system. All right, and there we go. We have finished the startup here. So from here, I actually am going to power this down and we're going to move this to the new Synology. Uh, we'll compare the actual time it took to just do our standard reboot to that. So we're going to go ahead and shut this system down. So I'm going to go ahead and hit stop. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. Uh, once this is down, we should be able to go to disks. And right now you can see it's on the free NAS. We're going to actually migrate this. So we're going to migrate the VDI and we're going to say Synology and we're going to hit OK. And this should go ahead and migrate this over to our Synology box from our FreeNAS box. And then we're going to power this thing up, see if we get any more speed increase. Uh, we should get a lot more speed increase, one, because we're going from an SMB to an iSCSI, which uh, iSCSI is better as far as that's concerned. And then two, we're going to be using newer hardware and we also have a bonded load balanced device. So we should have a considerable improvement when it comes to the actual performance of this machine. Okay, there we go. Our pool migrate finally happened. It took about five, six minutes to push all that over. Uh, let's go back to our VMs and we're going to go to Plex. We're going to check our disks. It's now on the Synology one. So with that, let's go ahead and boot this up or go to console and hit start. So before this took about a minute or so to start, let's see what this looks like now. And we're starting up and getting through the startup services here. We're about 10 seconds in. I was considerably faster, so uh, I'll do the actual comparison here at the end. Let's go ahead and log in and do a reboot because I remember the reboot taking a long time before. Uh, let's go ahead and try that. We'll go sudo reboot and type our password in. This took like almost two minutes before, so uh, I don't know if something was hung up or what, but I'm, I need to do another restart. That seemed a little too fast. So there, whoa, all right, so we're already going through the system. I didn't even have time to hit enter there. Um, here we go. So we're a couple seconds in now. Let's see how long it takes to get through our startup system services. Okay, that was really, really fast again. So 
huge upgrade as far as the time comparison. I'll put it uh, over here in uh, when I do the edits. That was a lot faster than I anticipated, so it just goes to show how much better of a system uh, this Synology with the new hardware and everything is compared to how I was doing it. Well, there you have it. That is kind of incredible to see the big change, but I also want to stipulate one thing on these reviews. This wasn't a knock against FreeNAS and just saying, hey, Synology has better software. This was just a different configuration than what I had. One, the actual FreeNAS box was using recycled pieces of hardware, a really old motherboard and some other stuff. And then on top of that, I was connecting through SMB shares instead of iSCSI. So on the actual uh, Synology box, which was performed considerably better, one, it had a lot newer hardware. We were connecting through iSCSI like we should, and it was all properly configured. So uh, that was pretty awesome. And we also had multiple network connections. This Synology box is using load balancing. So if anything else enters in and one connection's maxed, it'll actually use the other connection. So that's kind of incredible. That's, that's why you got such a huge performance increase. If we did an apples to apples, both set up proper iSCSI with the exact same hardware, it would come out to be be very very close to each other uh, where the free NAS and the actual Synology box so I just want to go ahead and stipulate that I know those test results look way skewed and they were uh, because of the differences in configuration and hardware but at the same time I was super impressed and super happy with the results so I absolutely love that little Synology box but at the same time that's not a knock against my free NAS my free NAS box also is very good it's just a different configuration and the fact it's using really old hardware doesn't help it its case at all so with all that said let me throw your thoughts down in the comments uh, i'm always looking forward to seeing that and then a uh, big shout out to all my patrons without you i couldn't make videos like this one and i'll see you in the next one